two, three, four, five, let's go! Well, hello and welcome to continue on the 700 Club. Before we get underway with some of the outstanding features we have for you this half an hour, I want to give you an opportunity to take advantage of a service that's been, ever since I've been associated with CBN, available to people 24 hours a day. It's our telephone counseling centers. They are there because we care what happens to you. Those numbers you see on your screen from time to time are not just there for pledges. They are there when people want to join the club. But more importantly, they are there because we care what happens to you. So if you need prayer, if you need help... Well, here's my question for yes. you. Are you a Trekkie or a Trekker? I'm a Trekker. Okay. I am Hardcore. a Trekkie. But <laughs> <laughs> Over the years, Star Trek has become far more than just a simple TV series. In fact, for thousands of faithful Trekkies or Trekkers, nothing could be more perfect or more exciting than the fantasies lived out by the crew of the Starship Enterprise. But for at least one crew member, that real-life voyage had a very dark side. Actress Grace Lee Whitney shared her intriguing story with entertainment reporter Sandy Brown. Just beyond these hills is the vast open space of Yosemite National Park. And nearby is the home of an actress who once traveled through vastness of space and time. She played Yeoman Janice Rand on the original Star Trek TV series. Yeoman Rand was in 11 of the 79 episodes, and she also played in four of the Star Trek motion pictures. But today, she's no longer reaching yeah, well, distant galaxies. Grace Lee Whitney is now reaching souls. What was it like to be involved in Star Trek that first year in 1966? It was the thrill of my life because I was a regular, and I had a rank, and I had a part, and I could develop this character. And I would leave my little house in the valley and leave my two children and come in to work and uh, put the uniform on and put the hair. You remember the hair with the braided, I mean, the woven hairdo and the makeup and the boots. What was happening in your personal life behind the scenes of Star Trek? I took diet pills to get thinner for the part and took diet pills to fit into my uniform. So that was leading a double life. Uh, and uh, the pressure of leading the double life, of having to take the pills not to eat, to do the part and try not to race. You know, diet pills, pills race you. And then to go home to my family, try to become the mother, the wife. Uh, even though I was separated, it was like, uh, it was just, uh, I was confused, and I was overwhelmed, and I was, I was afraid. And so I would drink. I would drink to come down. I would drink to find, to find a release from the pain and the pressure. Did any of the other cast members know that you were having problems? To me, I did not look drunk. Mm -hmm. I see the films today. I watch myself in Charlie X and in Miri and in Enemy Within and... And I love what I did. I love Janice Rand's performance. So I don't think it affected me that much. Now, how I felt inside was another thing. I had this feeling of, uh, of pressure inside. But we all did. Even Bill Shatner did. You know, we all had tremendous pressure to succeed. To succeed. Because it was brand new. We were all creating new roles. When did you first start drinking? 13. At the age of 13. I, I took a drink, it was Southern Comfort, and wow, wow, when I drank it, I thought, wow, it felt great. I could feel it warm going all the way down, and when it hit, I mean, before it even hit, I found ecstasy. Once you find that ecstasy, you chase it the rest of your life, one day at a time. As time progressed, that feeling of ecstasy became an obsession, and alcohol began to completely control Grace Lee Whitney's life. 
Her role as Janice Rand was written out of Star Trek during that first season, and another obsession took hold of her. Now, at the same time you were struggling with the addiction to alcohol, you were also struggling with a sexual addiction as well. 1980 was when I, I had an insatiable desire to try to fix what was wrong with me. And that's when I went from man to man. That was after the second husband. Mm -hmm. That was after those relationships did not work. And that's when I said, I don't care anymore. I'm just going to just die. What was a typical day like for you when you were struggling with this lifestyle? I was so thin. I was crazy. My teeth were loose. The, they were bleeding. I had bleeding gums. I was getting shots of thiamine in the fanny, you know. Uh, I was drinking. Uh, I was losing my hair. What was the worst point you reached with these addictions? I could really be explicit here. I wish I could, but I can't because we're on camera. But I am explicit when I go to Chowchilla Prison and I talk to the girls there. I tell them what happens if you stay out there as long as I did. Mm -hmm. I drank and used for 37 and a half years. Mm -hmm. I just felt dirty and I felt, I felt, uh, 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 I prostituted myself with men that I hated that I never would have even gone to lunch with. This is the sexual addiction this is where it takes you. It takes you into prost not only prostitution, it takes you into pornography. It takes you into using other people. Uh, and I got involved with, with a lawyer. Well, we had like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, we would set up uh, uh, liaisons with people and like put on shows. And I hated myself. Sometimes, at the end of these shows, I couldn't walk. I was at the end of my rope. I did not know it. Believe me, I didn't know it. I only knew that I couldn't, I couldn't stand what I was doing. And that's when I got down on Skid Row. What finally drove you to seek help? Well, I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so, and Grace Lee Whitney took the helping hand extended to her on Skid Row, and she began attending meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous. I looked up and I said, wow, you mean, you mean you're whom I'm looking for. You're what I'm looking for. You're the fix. You're the one. Yes. And he took the alcohol and the drugs away, took everything away. I had a complete, what they call, an, an, uh, a release. I had the obsession to drink and use was taken from me. When I came in and looked up at the Lord's Prayer, I looked up and it was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that I accepted into my heart. It was not the Lord. It was not Yeshua HaMashiach. But I loved God. And I prayed to him every night. I said the serenity prayer. I said all the prayers in the books. I really changed my, God changed my whole life. How did you meet Jesus Christ? <gasps> I might cry with this one. It was fabulous. I was two and a half years clean and sober. I'd been going to AA. I had gone back into Star Trek. I was making, going to, uh, to, uh, to uh, Australia and to England and, 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 and making all these personal appearances for the show. And I was clean and sober and I was, happy and um, uh, and I went to Israel and what happened was I saw a vision of the Lord on the rock praying you know the picture in the Bible of the Lord on the rock looking up saying not me Lord but if it has to be me Lord let this chalice you know I will take it I will do it if it has to be me and I saw that and I went but I'm Jewish and it was like he looked at me and said so am I I went, you're Jewish? You know, it, it never dawned on me that he was Jewish. And two months later, I gave my life to the Lord. What is your life like today? Where is your focus? My focus is in glorifying the Lord. And I'm full of joy. I've done so many wonderful articles and 
I get fan mail, so much fan mail, and Star Trek is bigger on my life now than it was then. Paramount took me back. Gene Roddenberry put me in all the films, all the movies. Star Trek 1, 3, 4, and 6. I am now com a, a, a communications officer Rand on the USS Excelsior with Captain Sulu as the captain. I love my fans, and my fans love the fact that I'm recovering, that I am born again, that I am leading a life like I'm leading. I've come a long way in my sobriety, and that is by the grace of God. And this is what I live for. I live for carrying this message. And I'm happy, joyous, and free today. Uh, and Yeshua HaMashiach is just awesome. He is an awesome God.